Guys, thanks for the invitation to RDL Technologies today. I'm going to start with yourself, Lewis. Just tell us a little bit about this ST38 machine from Star that you purchased, and when you purchased it, and why you bought the machine. We bought the machine last September, uh, back end of 2016. It was the, the natural next step for us. We had 14 Star machines from a SR10 up to an SV32. This was the next step, an ST38, which gives us capacity up to 40 mil diameter. Uh, we can do multi-axis milling, balance turning, and it's, it's a lot more powerful than anything else we've got in the shop. Because it is, a, it is a, a sliding head lathe, although we see inside the machine it's got the turret configuration rather than the, the platens. What, what does that offer that's different, Brian? The turrets give you flex, flexibility. Um, you can, there's so many different tools and tool holders available for the turret to do various different things. We could do gear orbing, gun drilling, uh, polygon turning, all these things are capable on this type of machine. We talk about sliding head and, and fixed head lathes. It's somewhere in the middle of those. It is really, yes, because primarily it is a sliding head machine. It has a 350 mil stroke on Z1, but it also has a secondary Z3 axis, which allows you to use it basically as a fixed head if you so wish. And because we have a JBS unit on as, as well, you can clamp the JBS, so you clamp in the bar, and then turn with Z3, and then that improves the ovality on the component that you turn it. So can we just look at the Z3 moving now, just, just so that, uh, because it'd be interesting to see this here. So essentially, we're saying we can fix the bar in a position and then we can yeah. use Z3 here to do the turning operation, which is exactly like a fixed head oh, machine. Yeah. yeah, obviously the stroke on the Z3 is a little bit more restricted compared to a fixed head, but it just gives you that little bit more flexibility, because with a sliding head sometimes you turn the part and it's very difficult to go back because then the material goes out the guide bush and you don't have the traditional support. Whereas when you have a, another Z axis, you don't have that problem. You can turn with Z1 and do it in a conventional manner. So then, for example, when you want a screw cut, traditionally on this machine, you do it with the Z3 because there's no need really for the bar to be flying in and out. You just use the Z3 like you would on a fixed head. So you've got total flexibility. Now, I'm going to come back to you now, Lewis, on this particular part here. Uh, this is made out of bar. Can you just tell us, because this really then sort of emphasises the fact that the machine's got plenty of power and, and, and what it can do. What is this part and what have, you, what have you done with it? It's a support block. We made it from 38mm round bar. Uh, we milled it on, it on every side. If you were to see that part, most engineers would think it was a milled part. It was actually made on our sliding head machine. And I think what's interesting as well is this, the material that this is and how you went about machining it because it shows the stability of the machine, doesn't it? It is. It's EN16T, so it's, it's a heavy duty material. It's high tensile. It's uh, doing it on the ST38, gave us the ability to machine it through the night, which made it extremely competitive to anybody else quoting the job. Uh, that's one of the main reasons we chose this sort of machine. And, and I've been told as well, you're making that in just a few minutes complete. It is, it's around four minutes to make that from the round bar to produce that off the sliding head. So with, without a man standing there, it's, it's, it's a great... It's a good example. Let's, let's just pick this one up as well. This is, uh, just, just tell us a little bit about that as a component. This, we've been doing this job for a few years now. We used to make it, uh, part make it on an SR20 and then finish it on our fixed head machine and then again on the milling machine. We now can make this complete in one go on this ST38. It's drilled all the way through, milled along the flats. And it's complete. One hit, the job's done, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you were to summarise, Brian, I mean, you, your involvement with Star, for people that know you, you, you've been involved with Star for many years, so yeah. you'd know a lot about this machine and their other machines. But wh where does this take Star as a company, being able to offer this kind of technology, this ST38, the size of it, the weight, the power, and the flexibility? To my best of my, best of my knowledge, there isn't really another sliding head machine out there like this one. Um, it just has so much flexibility. The limitations really is basically is yourself, what you can do with it, because there's so much capability within the machine. There's not many things you can't do. Uh, sometimes you have to think hard, um, but there isn't much that you can't do on this machine. And for the business, Lewis, in general, what's this addition done for RDL Technologies in this particular shop here, this machine shop? This machine's just the next step. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful machine. It gives us the ability to think outside the box, make parts that you wouldn't normally think were possible on a sliding head machine. 
you can make parts complete in one go. Uh, that most companies will be making two, three ops on fixed heads in milling machines. I, I also know from talking to Ray earlier that what you're currently doing on this machine continues. There's going to be a lot more ST38s in here, so it can only be good news for Star as well. So, Brian, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Lewis.